Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today we're going to be implementing uniform variables. And you might be wondering, what's a uniform variable? Essentially, in our GLSL code, we have a sort of an issue. For instance, you saw in the last video that I can multiply the position by something like 0 0.25, and that, for instance, will cause a scaling effect around the origin. So, how would I, for example, control this scaling effect from in my main program? And right now, we can't really do that. We don't really have a good way of sending variables into GLSO. And that's what a uniform variable is. You can create this thing in your GLSO code called a uniform variable. And what you can do is you can update that from in the program. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to create some method of accessing these uniform variables from within our shader class. So, I suppose I'll start with the public void add uniform method. And what this is going to do is we're going to take in some string called uniform for whatever the name of this uniform variable is, and this will, will sort of start make our shader start keeping track of it. So first off, we're going to have an int called uniform location, which is going to equal gl get uniform location. It takes in two parameters. For pro first parameter is which program you want to look in. Of course, it's going to be our program. And next is going to be the name of the uniform, so uniform. And this will, of course, return some pointer value for whatever the uniform location is in memory. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to test if this is some invalid location, so in other words, it doesn't exist. And if you want, you can just put negative 1 here, but I personally, I prefer to do the hexadecimal version, so 0x, ff, 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 ff. And the reason is, I, just to me, that stands out more that, hey, I'm doing an error check. So, yeah, it's just a sort of a personal style, I suppose. But you can do it either way. And then, if, if there is an error, I'm, of course, going to print out the error. So, print out, error could not find uniform plus uniform. And just because it's probably useful, I'm going to create a new exception just to immediately do dot print stack trace. That's, that's the only reason. And then I'm going to exit 0, or exit 1, because it's an error. And now, now that I know the uniform location must be valid at this point, you might be wondering, well, what should I do with it? And that's a good question. There's several ways you could handle this. My personal preferred way is to create a hash map. So I'm going to create a private hash map. And it's going to map strings to integers. And I'm going to call it uniforms. So yeah, and of course I'm going to have to import it. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and initialize it. No big deal. You know how to do this stuff, so uniforms equals a new hash map of... I can probably type fast for now. Integer. And yeah, so... There. There. That should... Well, it did give us a hash map, and I'm just going to store the uniforms in a hash map. Because it's going to be a lot easier to access the uniform just by this string name. So, uniforms dot put, I suppose, yes. You're going to map the key to uniform location. And that should give us a brand new uniform in this big giant hash map. And really, that's most of the work right there. The only other thing we need is, now that, we have, now that we're keeping track of the uniform variables somehow, now we need some way of actually setting them, because, you know, what's the point of creating all these variables if we can't actually access them? That's the entire point. So I'm going to create four different methods for accessing them. First off, public void set uniform i. And this is going to set some integer, so it's going to take string uniform name and then some int value. And OpenGL has a nice method for this called gl uniform 1i. And what we can do is we can pass in the pointer to the uniform, just pass in the value like this. So to get the actual pointer to the uniform, I'm going to use uniforms.get, and it's going to get uniform name. That should get us the pointer based on the uniform name. And yeah, I'm just going to create three more methods similar to this. So 
Next one is going to be get uniform f, and it's going to be for floating point values. So, and it's going to be set get gl uniform one f, and yeah. So that completes that. Next two, I'm just going to call gl get set uniform because these ones are going to be actually for our classes. This one's going to be for vector three f, and it's going to be setting three f so uniform. Oh, yeah, vector three f value, right? And just gonna set it to value dot get x. Wait, dot, dot get x. There we go. Value dot get y. And why am I not putting spaces here? Sorry, that's bothering me. And finally, value dot get z. And yeah, that all that pretty much completes the thing. The final thing I really want is, whoops, gl set uniform matrix for f value. So I want to be able to set uniform matrices. So there's a method for that, believe it or not, geo matrix four. And I believe I just have to do value dot get m for the matrix. And that should work. No. Okay, one moment. Well, apparently my mind was still in the land of C where you could actually just pass in arrays like this pretty easily, but no, you see, if you remember how we had to do the util and flip all the float buffers, yeah, we kind of have to do that again for matrices, so I'm going to create public static float buffer, create, whoops, create flipped buffer, and it's going to take in a matrix 4f value. So first off, going to have to create the float buffer. Buffer is going to be equal create float buffer, and the size is going to be four by four because that's how big the matrix is. So they're not quite just magic numbers. Four and i equals zero. I is less than oh four, right? I plus plus, and then four and j equals zero. J is less than four. J plus plus. Whoops. Semicolon. So in this big double for loop, I'm just going to do buffer dot put whatever ma value dot get i comma j is and that then now that I have all the data in the buffer I can do buffer dot flip to put them all in the order that OpenGL wants and then return the buffer now finally I can just do util dot create float buffer of Value. Wait, not create flip buffer. Create flipped buffer of the matrix, and that is still giving me an error. Wonderful. One moment. And there's actually one parameter in here that I completely forgot about, which is whether the matrix is in row major order or column major order. And we want to pass in true because we're in row major order. So that pretty much completes the shader class, really. Now we can just go ahead, go in here, add some uniform variables, and see how it works. So, in our vertex shader, I'm going to create, oh, I'll just put it right here, a uniform float. I'll just call it uniform for the time being. Oh, right, I can't do that. Um, I'll call it uniform float for the time being, because I don't really... I don't really have any particular big use I want to do for uniforms right now, so I'm just going to play around a bit. So I've got this uniform float, and I'm going to put it somewhere in here. What should I do? How about the clamp? That's, that could be interesting. So I'm going to pass in some uniform for what value I should clamp to between 0 and whatever the uniform float is. So, first off, right here after I do shader.compile shader, I'm going to add the uniform. So add uniform and I called it uniform float. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and save that because I don't know if I've remembered. So I've got the uniform value. So now, in update, I can actually start updating it. So I'm gonna create just some float temp equals, oh, I'll, I'll say 0, 0.0, just for now, 0, 0.0f. And every update, temp plus equals time.getDelta. And, so that, that's just creating some temp variable that's constantly incre incrementing. <coughs> and, 
here I'm going to do shader, if I can type it, dot set uniform. I'm going to set the uniform float to math.sign of temp. If, and I'm going to cast it to a float. And there. There we go. So, that, eh, let's see what happens. Run, and, hey, now we have sort of a fade-in, fade-out effect. And then it goes black for a while. So, let's actually change this to math.absolute value of math.sign of temp. Just because the negative one values aren't that meaningful. So, yeah. Now we've got our triangle sort of fading in and out. So it's kind of an interesting effect. Yeah. And we're of course going to be using uniforms for much more useful things than making a triangle fade in and out, but, you know, there you go. You got the triangle fading in and out now. So, thank you. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time. We will actually be doing something very, very useful with sh uniforms.